me open up my tax receipts from last year. What all, what did I spend? $12,000. And they, they were almost all with Family First Life. Did you make any sales? None to speak of. I mean, I made a handful of sales. I've got them listed as CRM leads, CRM, 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 CRM. So they were definitely all, they, they were definitely all out of the CRM that you guys are talking about with Greg and Tyra and everybody. Oh, you heard the entire Tyra. Um, Based on my impression from the Tyra interview, Tyra Hamilton, it seems like they were laughing at you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's you know it's kind of it's kind of a mess, and, and what I've gleaned from everything that you know your interviews with her, Greg, Integrity, the granddaddy of them all that buys up these IMOs, they've got chops. They're the IMO, aren't they? In the country, 15 billion annual. It's crazy what these guys do. I don't know that I would go poke that bear. I'm not saying somebody doesn't have a good beef. I totally get that people like Greg, John, whomever, right? They got a beef with these guys. I don't know that poke that bear. I'm I'm, I'm looking at some little twelve thousand dollar thing here. It's not a lot of money, but it is a lot of money, right? Were you new in the business so, when you started giving them twelve thousand? It, it was over time. My whole year, by the way, twenty twenty one, and and I was still working for FFL. No, I am not, and that's the thing. I've moved on. Like I said in my email to you, I've got bigger fish in the fryer than to go chase this thing down. If there's a class action, you got my email, right? I did get yeah, your email. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I said in my email, if this thing goes to class action, yeah, count me in. But I'm not going to be one of the names people in the suit. I mean, Greg and whoever, you know, they, they, they had a lot more money in it you know, and a lot bigger fight. What, what do you guys, I mean, what do you guys have? I do a six day per week video conference call and you hear these stories one by one. And when you hear these type of stories, mm -hmm. such as your story, your mm -hmm. story, $12,000 of leads and how many sales? It's a minuscule. It's nothing. David, I sold, I bought a guy's real estate practice four years ago and I've sold millions. I mean, big numbers don't intimidate me. They don't impress me. But I can, I got hustle. I, I know how to work. You're in that famous town of Kenosha. Yeah, we're, we're on the map now. How much time and effort did you spend calling these $12,000 of leads? I was somewhat inconsistent. But, you know, I bought the, you know, in addition to buying the leads, I also bought that phone burner. Do they recommend you buy a phone burner? They do. They absolutely recommend that you buy a phone burner. You know, they tell you you don't have to, but they recommend that you do. They tell you that you don't have to buy that app. I, don't, I, I mean, if I jog my memory, I could remember what it was, where you can go get office space anywhere in the, in the country, you know, where you can log in, grab the office space while you're on these travel trips. They recommend that you do that. They buy the app, which is, you know, 100 bucks a month. $12,000 of leads. How many leads? Leads was that actually? It was a mixture over time, Dave. There were the instant internet leads. There were the cheesy mortgage protection leads that are aged. <clears throat> they were uh, final expense leads, three months, six months, one month old. Because I, I saved these in a PDF in my tax file. Let me just see if it, if it indicates what they were. Because I did not keep the leads themselves. I think what happened is this thing just calls them Mail Pro Leads LLC. That was the merchant. You thought about requesting a refund for that $12,000 of leads? I'm not. I wrote them off on my taxes. It, it offset the loss because there, there was no profit to be made. I was sucking wind separating from my wife. My kid was, he had a sick kid with autism. Sean, Mike, and all those guys that are you know thinking around with this thing was just as important as it as it can be. It didn't make my A list. You know what I mean? That it, took you a lot it, of time to call that many leads. It did. Okay, so I'm looking now. Okay, I I'm, have. I'm looking okay, at the email. Said, let me, let me know when this goes to class action with or anyways. I spent thousands on leads. I'm very busy with financial recovery, building a business. I have a grandson with autism, elderly mom, disabled. Yep. I yep. can't. I, you don't want a mess. You just want class action. No individual lawsuits for you. Right. Absolutely not. Twelve thousand dollars is not worth the fight for me. I got my email here from IntegrityMarketing.com. These following leads have been added to your CRM. No dot reply at IntegrityMarketing.com. The few sales you made were they primarily Americo? It's safe. That's safe to say. I think I sold more Americo than anything. I sold Americo, American Amicable. I think I sold like like an Aetna one and a, and a Mutual Omaha. It was over the better part of the year. Holy smokes. What the heck is with these leads? I'm buying these leads. And it's one thing to tell me, well, we can't control if Mrs. Jones filled out 15 different things on the internet. And, yeah, okay. Okay, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a 20 year old kid. Let's say Mrs. Jones did. Okay, so I just bought Mrs. Jones on an instant internet lead. If I don't use, if I don't sell Mrs. Jones, she's still sitting in the CRM. Who's, who's calling that? Does that just mean somebody's gonna pick her up Mrs. Jones on a one month lead, then somebody else is gonna pick her up on a three month lead? Let's just say that somebody sells Mrs. Jones when they bought her at a three month lead. She finally buys something to shut us up. Who's telling the CRM she bought something? Wait. Mrs. Jones is sitting there waiting to be sold at a six month lead. When did you realize that these yeah. leads were sold to 
multiple people. You know, very early on, probably within two months of, of starting up, so it would have been early in the year, January, February, to me, those were the one month, three months, 90 day, whatever, that, but they weren't the instant internet leads. To me, I understood that the recycling of the lead, which I didn't think was good practice, I didn't think it was unethical, because if they bought the lead, they own the lead, they can do with the leads what they want. I thought it was sloppy operations that nobody was talking about going in and calling them, updating them, or saying, Mrs. Jones doesn't want to hear from us anymore, stop calling her, whatever. But what I didn't understand until your guys interview day because they were doing that mess with the instant internet leads that's what i bought i bought mostly instant internet leads and if i bought a one month lead i knew i was getting a recycled lead i didn't know how bad it was and when i bought the aged mortgage protection i knew what i was buying i had no idea there'd be 10 year old damn leads hey, i talked to some i sold that house six years ago instant internet leads were you told they were exclusive i was yeah that was the majority of your $12,000 of lead purchases? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How long did it take you to find out that the, those were bogus leads as well? Yeah, like I said, I didn't realize that those were bogus leads until your guys interviewed Dave. I, I moved on to Advantage One Brokers, and then they were going through so many gyrations operationally. I'm like, I'm out. I can't, I can't hang out here while they sort this so operational you, process out. I don't... So you just ahead. believed you had bad luck calling, let's say, eight to 10,000 of instant internet leads. You thought it was just you? I didn't think it was just me as much as it was me plus. We didn't know how many how many times Mrs. Jones clicked on buttons on the internet. That was a lot of it too. I mean, I'm not stupid. I didn't think that was the bulk of that. And I started suspecting things were squirrely with the leads. That's what you were told when you complained about these duplicated leads, that they filled up multiple lead forms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tyra Hamilton <laughs> mentioned that on her phone conversation, yeah. and she yeah. had a little bit of a chuckle that people would actually believe yeah. that. If wow. I'd have been, if I'd have just got head down and, and, and ground it for 90 days, and then I started having crap luck, I would have been, no, this is not me. There are advertisements stating that the average person is, is making $111,000. They'll, they'll mentor you to make a quarter million. Did you actually believe that? No, no, I, I didn't believe that for a minute. You see that cease and desist, FTC? I, I, I heard of it in, in your, I think I saw it in you know, that you, that you put out. They said they can't lie on online recruiting with exaggerated okay. income claims. I, I knew that was going to happen. I told my wife a year ago, I said, you know, it's going to put a stop to this BS because these kids are not treating insurance with respect. This stuff borders on shaking down elderly people, man. The way they bang through these leads. I told her that. I said, it was going to bring them down. There's going to be an insurance commissioner that's going to step in and slap them hard. But then it's probably going to wake up the FTC. I actually physically filed in a couple of states. Some mm -hmm. of the states said they need a specific example of a person who got churned, which means they yeah. got they bought an expensive policy initially, and then they got replaced to a better one from the same lead or marketing company. Okay, and reset their contestability period. Right. Uh, you lose all that built up cash value if it's a whole life policy. Help me understand how to sell this product. Don't tell me I got to shut up and grind. I was grinding when you guys were learning how to wipe your noses. Tell me how this works. And, and one kid flat out said, and I can't remember who it was today, one kid flat out said, look, we don't care what works. We care what's duplicatable. And I thought, I'm out. You kids, you, you get children running the freaking enterprise here. I'm out. You're not going to scale this. Duplicatable, does, does that mean duplicatable in lead sales? Is that what he was talking Dupl about? Duplicatable, in, yes. I mean, indirectly, yes. It seems like they're, the, they're the, the one thing was that was duplicatable by... was lead sales to people like yourself. Uh, at the end of the day, ain't it so, right? <laughs> to borrow a phrase, but, the training was all about watch the videos. It seems like you uh, were the like, sale. I, I can, if, if you've uh, spent $12,000, yeah. you were the sale. Yeah, as it turns out, this thing's a hot mess. If, if, if I, I had, if I had tens of thousands, then I'd be madder than a hornet, and I'd be, I'd put, I'd put a dog in this fight. I would. If, if I could get someone, such as the gentleman from Texas, a guy McCord, who says he's going to file a lawsuit, if I could get you the, the mm -hmm. template where all you have to do is go to courthouse, change the words, and or filing fee, would you do it? I'm no stranger to legal process, at least at a medium level. That's all it would cost me, and who am I up against? I will answer the question. What would happen once you file, they respond. Then it goes through the whole rigmarole of 
responses and all that other stuff. From what I see coming up my alley, multiple lawyers that are charging $1,200 an hour to FFL are representing them. I would imagine that they don't want to spend that $1,200 multiple hours flying out to your city and your state. What I would like to do with the help of some attorney somewhere or Guy McCord is to develop that template where I could take it, file. The most likely scenario is they'll just give you your money back. The negative consequences are it ends up being treble damages. Your time and effort, whatever that is, let's say $7,000 a month, average salary in your city, $5,000, pick a number, you times it by three, and that's what the damages are. Maybe when you get that shoot me an email. When I, I get, I when I get, better, I when I get the, the big... template, when I get the template, right. because, because if I was a major corporation that would have to spend multiple tens of thousands of dollars to to defend your case. When you have mm -hmm. uh, Tyra online, when you have Greg Birch, and I'm sure there'll be others, and oh, Tyra man. and Greg seemed yeah. like they were telling the truth. I, I remember here, seeing some of the early, early recordings of uh, Greg when he came out with the advantage one brokers. Here's a question. Is anybody thinking about you know, doing a class action on these guys? I, I all was, these little onesie twosies things. I was told by a gentleman named Mr. Michael Schles, but there's a class action. I'm not 100% mm -hmm. sure if he's telling me the truth. Greg Birch going back and forth through lawyers, that was about a class action as well. Mr. Michael Schles mm -hmm. doesn't pick up the phone. These gentlemen may have just been playing me. But there's definitely something, or they say in, in Texas, you know, there's a skunk in the woodpile. There's no question. There's something bad wrong here, as I say in the South. Wolf of Wall Street on steroids. Yeah. Yeah, I and mean, this is just me guessing. George, you, you happen to be a good talker. You're, you come across as a sharp individual. You only lost a couple of thousand dollars plus your time and effort. The gentleman from Minnesota, the, the old elderly gentleman, $9,000 in no sales. Robert Taylor. It was a big deal, and I, and I think it's going to take a bigger horse to win that race. You know what I mean? That's why I'm looking at class action, because the onesie twosie stuff, you know, Sean Mike is... is I mean, I, I could be overstepping, I could be overstating, but he seems like he's a vindictive individual. <laughs> For FFL to give the direction to American Amicable to cancel all of our freaking contracts. I called American Amicable when I got that letter, Dave, and I'm, and I'm like, don't redirect me back to my IMO. My contract is with you. Why are you letting me go? She wouldn't answer the question. Well, we were told to redirect these questions back to the IMO. I said, I'm not asking you any other question but one. Is my contract with you or not? And she wouldn't answer. I said, I've had it with this whole thing since since. FFL to this BS with, with Advantage when they, they hit hyper growth, the number two reason businesses fail, they weren't ready for it. And they're, and they're flopping all over the road with this. You got out of the industry. Well, that, that particular part of the industry. Exactly. I, I'm selling, like I said, physicians, mutual, med, sub, and the commissions are you know, 20%, whatever, 20 odd percent. It's nothing. But I was number one agent in the office last month. How much money are you making now? Not nearly enough. I, I'm also doing real estate, trying to, re, trying to re, revive that. So just to let I'm you doing, know, doing both. Medicare supplement, you get commissions mm -hmm. from multiple years. I believe it's six years. It really doesn't matter what you're making initially. It, it, it continues. And that's exactly why I picked this segment uh, of the uh, industry, Dave, because I've got the licenses right on the border of Illinois. So I'm, I'm servicing Illinois. I'm from Ohio. I'm going to keep that license to last month. You know, I, I made just under three grand. You and I know that's nothing. How many sales was that based on? Seven. You're making $10,000 a month. If you, if you extrapolate that to what the money that will actually come later, a decent chunk of change just based on those seven sales. Exactly. And that's, and that's what I'm building because when, when we were trying to recover, actually when I joined the insurance industry in the first place, my son had a mental illness 10 years ago and we, it wiped us out completely. You know, 115% okay. commission or whatever it was looked pretty interesting. What I'd like you to do, George, if you could, uh, the YouTube channel we have, if you could make comments, like, share, mm -hmm. subscribe, trying to come up with some good mm -hmm. content. Yeah, let me, let me look over and see if I can support the cause like that. It's got to settle out it's not us out we're talking about a multi-billion dollar company the lifeblood of this particular multi-billion dollar company has to be bringing in new agents generating some sort of revenue from these new agents i i hate to tell you how they generate the new revenue oh no i i was i was part of a network marketing company and they were shut down by the Federal Trade Commission. I sent another email to the FTC today. Well, it's not online. The interview yesterday based on Craigslist. The Craigslist said a average income between 50 and 250, 100,000 a year. It's a blatant violation. You can't 
I know, right? <laughs> I know. And it happened to be know, the, an office owned by Sean Mikey. He was the, the wow. VP. Just grabbed it, did a screenshot, sent it over to the FTC. That's crazy. What I'm concerned about is all these agents telling me the same story. Mm -hmm. And these two in the know whistleblowers, high up whistleblowers, telling me that it, that's the way it is. It's not by accident. Mm -hmm. I need to do something to, to get partners because they're coming after me individually mm -hmm. because apparently they believe the NAIP website has a lot of potential. They believe I'm pretty good on, mm -hmm. the, on these six day per week video conference calls. When I was in conversations with the attorney, he was asking me over and over, are you going to stop? If we make some sort of deal with you, can we trust you to actually keep your end of it? And I had a mm -hmm. feeling she could mm -hmm. tell by my intonation of my voice that I'm that I'm too honest. Do I come across mm -hmm. as too honest? You, you, you come across as straightforward, that's for sure. I guess at the end of the day, she says, we can't make a deal with this guy. It's just too straightforward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would like your help in something. I need to make interviews to put on YouTube because you know the, these interviews are exciting. People are telling their honest mm -hmm. truth. Sometimes the honest truth comes mm -hmm. across better when they believe it's a anonymous phone call like Tyra. I hear you, and I and I, I literally appreciate and respect what you're doing. I, but like I said, from from conversation one, uh, even in my email, I, I, I'm not in a position right now. I can't you know go poke this bear right now. I can't. If it escalates. I'm gonna to have to be on the on the B list for for calling. Right now, I can't. I can't. I understand. Are you able to complain to the Department of Insurance, State of Wisconsin? They do prefer local complaints, as opposed to the state people, or the FTC. If you know of illegalities, according to your Department of Insurance regulations, specifically what you told me about about the churning, if they're selling this leads to multiple people, you know that leads to churning inevitably it leads to elder abuse mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you mm -hmm. should inform your department of insurance honestly it's, it's a little bit of a reach that it's going to lead to, to churning because but in my view the churning actually takes place like when sean is selling what do you call those those leads like when you leave and he's all mad and uh, bounty leads Greg bounty Bush leads bounty things. leads thank you yeah now, now that right there is a blatant violation that's blatant Hey, That's George, me, that is, George, that is a direct line. Uh, George, I've got news. A gentleman called me, very anonymous phone call. Eventually, we're going to make it public. Inevitably, mm -hmm. what's happened, if you know that you've got a particular marketing company is teaching their agents to sell a hugely overpriced policy, according to Mike Michael Schles, his marketing company, 3% of his sales are America, specifically for DUI and bankruptcy. If you heard that interview, mm -hmm. so if you've got mm -hmm. FFL, who's Regarding putting, he's put, world. he's putting them with, with every, uh, f let's say 40%, 50%, 30%, but it's a large number. You know that these are mm -hmm. hugely replaceable policies. You could wake up in the morning, search for these customers who, who are relatively healthy people who bought this policy for America. They pay the same amount of money and, and get twice or three times more coverage. Right. And, and if a, one of these people is over 65 years old. I did notice in one state, it's over 70 years old, that's elder abuse.